Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for watching. My name is Ola Jumoke. So in today's video, we will be discussing money and investment practices that can really help you in terms of building and enhancing your financial well-being. So as I'm sure you've heard and are probably experiencing right now, inflation is all the rave. Prices are going through the roof and it's actually affecting our quality of life on a day-to-day -day basis. Juxtaposed with this, of course, is the fact that interest rates are actually going higher around the world. This is, of course, because central banks around the world are trying to curb inflation by increasing interest rates over time. When central banks increase interest rates, it basically sucks the money supply from the economy, thereby reducing the rate of inflation. Now, that can be a very good thing on one hand for savers, but it can be a bad or detrimental thing for borrowers who have to borrow funds or loans at a higher rate. So I get the question a lot from my clients as to how they can invest alongside inflation or how they can protect their portfolios against raging inflation. And this is a great question because you really want to insulate the purchasing power of your portfolio against inflation. But the challenge with that, of course, as we've seen over the last two years, is that market conditions can change very quickly. So you really don't want to be in a position where you are churning your portfolio according to what is the order of the day. But instead of focusing on short-term phenomenon, I think it's more important to invest according to your goals and your investment objectives over the longer term. So in this video, we will be looking at several ways to really invest alongside inflation or insulate your portfolio against inflation. Now, although I am an investment professional, I manage wealth for high net worth individuals and families across the world, I would always say to you, make sure you get independent investment advice. All I'm going to talk about on this this video is purely for educational purposes and should not be taken as investment advice or solicitation. So the first thing you can do is that you can invest in commodities via commodity stocks. When inflation goes higher, that actually benefits commodity producers and those who play in the commodity space. So for example, when oil prices spike, that causes a spike typically in oil price stocks. So in order for you to gain exposure to oil prices going higher, you can invest in oil companies. The second way to invest alongside inflation is through real estate or properties. When you buy a property, there are two gains essentially to be made from that property. The first one is capital gains, i.e. the price of the property accelerating or growing over time. And the second benefit from owning a property is the rental yield, especially if it's a buy to let property, i.e. you've bought the property in order to rent it out. So if you wanted to sort of beat inflation to a certain degree, you can invest in properties, which would mean that you are making that rental yield, which are sometimes pegged to inflation and can help negate some of that loss of purchase and power in other parts of your portfolio. For example, if you hold growth stocks that maybe don't pay out dividends, rental yields can be a fantastic way to ensure that you're getting some inflows in terms of cash and liquidity. The third way to invest alongside inflation is to buy or purchase inflation linked bonds. Now there aren't so many of them out there and they may not be exactly pegged to inflation, but the ethos behind these bonds is that their coupons or the interest paid on the bond really varies alongside inflation. So when you get high inflation, the rate you earn on the bonds goes higher. On the other hand, when inflation is low, the rate you earn, of course, is lower. But in the high inflation environment as we have now, these sort of bonds or credit assets can really go a long way in insulating your portfolio against inflation. The fourth way to invest alongside inflation is to invest in dividend paying stocks. The reason I've chosen dividend investing is because as inflation goes higher, the purchase and power of your income, your salary, and perhaps your savings can go lower, especially if if the interest rate that you're earning on your savings isn't tantamount to inflation rates, which typically isn't the case. So you might be earning one to 2% in a bank account if you're lucky, but inflation at the moment is on the higher side of single digits. So clearly you won't be earning as much. And if your investment portfolio is split in such a way that you are getting some inflows in terms of liquidity or cash, at least that is mitigating some of the loss you might experience in other parts of your portfolio that are not really cash flow generating assets. And the last point, which is very salient and I'd say for 
for me, one of the most important is the way I look at my portfolio. I look at my portfolio from a long-term growth perspective. So I'm not really investing according to the gyrations and inflation. That's not to say that I won't take advantage of short-term arbitrage or short-term dislocations in the markets that could really enhance my portfolio. But in terms of the way my portfolio is split, in terms of my asset allocation, I'm very much a long-term investor. So I tend to look at things from a long-term perspective as opposed to benchmarking the performance of my portfolio on short-term gyrations in inflation or other variables. And I think it's really important to think about what your investment objectives are. So of course, over the last two years, we've had a ballooning in terms of valuations of stocks. And what we're seeing today is a pullback or a correction in that. Some stocks have been super overvalued, i.e. they've been super overbought. And now the markets are correcting for those factors. If I had the funds, I would be looking at investing in high quality, high value stocks that would most likely weather the storm if we do have another recession. That for me would be the most important part of capitalizing on the situation as we have today. So I do hope this video has been helpful. If it has, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell if you'd like to see more videos on investing and money management and of course wealth creation. Until next time, look after yourselves. Bye for now.